Ich muss zu der Du. Ah, ich weiß. Hallo und willkommen. Ich bin Meister Lenz and you're watching Get Germanize, uh, German Reacting to German News. Basically in this new series, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna inform ourselves about what German news outlets have to report. This one, the Tagesschau.de, Tagesschau is basically one of the biggest German news shows, a big German news outlet on the internet as well. And so what kind of news are they putting out? What are they prioritizing? Uh, interesting for you, hopefully, so you can see, well, how it is compared to what the news say in your country, what is important right now in your country versus in Germany. Germany is focusing probably on different things than your your country might be so that would be interesting we're also going to read them in german and then uh, use google to translate them instantaneously so you understand better what's going on so i would say uh, without further ado let's get started right away lasst uns anfangen so what we get here sachsen anhalt und bayern mund und nase bedecken cover mouth and nose Erste Bundesländer streichen ÖPNV-Maskenpflicht. Nachdem sich die Gesundheitsminister auf keinen Kurs bei den Corona-Bestimmungen einigen konnten, legen einzelne Bundesländer jetzt vor. In Sachsen-Anhalt und Bayern fällt die Maskenpflicht im Nahverkehr. In der Bundesregierung ist das Echo geteilt. So this means in English, Sachsen-Anhalt and Bavaria. The first federal states are removing the public transport mask requirement. After the health ministers could not agree on a course for the corona regulations, individual federal states are now submitting. In Saxony-Anhalt and Bavaria, masks are no longer compulsory in local transport. In the federal government, this echo or the echo is divided. Okay, so let's click on that and see what the details are on this. So we read this already. So here stand. 14 Uhr 42. This means that this is the current state of the news and it's going to be updated. Like this is the last time it's been updated, basically. And that date is today. Yeah, I, I kind of dated the video, I suppose. But anyway, Sachsen-Anhalt und Bayern schaffen die Maskenpflicht im öffentlichen Personennahverkehr ab. Ab Donnerstag können die Menschen in Sachsen-Anhalt ohne Masken, Bus und Bahn fahren. In Bayern ab Samstag. Die Kabine oder die Kabinette der beiden Bundesländer begründeten ihre Entscheidungen mit einer stabilen Infektionslage. Während Bundesgesundheitsminister Karl Lauterbach das Vorpreschen der Länder kritisiert, begrüßte Christian Lindner den Wegfall der Masken. The first federal states are removing the public transport mask requirement. Saxony Anhalt in Bavaria are abolishing the mask requirement in local public transport. From Thursday, people in Saxony Anhalt can travel by bus and train without masks in Bavaria from Saturday. The cabinets of the two federal states justified their decisions with a stable infection situation. While Federal Minister of Health Karl Lauterbach criticized the advance of the federal states, Christian Lindner welcomed the elimination of the masks. So, Big deal for Germans since obviously wearing a mask for a couple of hours is not necessarily the most comf comfortable thing in the world. What is your opinion on this? Do you think it's too early? Do you think uh, it should have been done months ago? Let me know and let's move on to the next piece of news that they think deserves to be on page number one. So basically this is again talking about the uh, requirement of wearing masks and that it's not verhältnismäßig anymore, meaning it's not appropriate anymore. Uh, so let's have a look at that. Die beiden Bundesländer hatten sich zu dem Alleingang entschlossen, nachdem die Gesundheitsministerinnen und Minister sich bei einem Treffen nicht auf einen gemeinsamen Kurs bei den Corona-Schutzmaßnahmen einigen konnten. Bayerns Gesundheitsminister Klaus Holecek sagte zu der Begründung, das Coronavirus mache nicht mehr den Hauptteil der Viruserkrankungen aus. Influenza und RS-Virus hätten viel höhere Anteile bei den Erkrankten in Krankenhäusern. Insofern sei eine Maskenpflicht zum Covid-Schutz nicht mehr verhältnismäß oder verhältnismäßig. Die Staatsregierung spreche weiterhin eine Empfehlung zum Tragen von Masken aus. 
Bezüglich der Corona-Situation schrieb Ministerpräsident Markus Söder auf Twitter, die Infektionslage ist seit langem stabil. The two federal states decided to go it alone after the health ministers were unable to agree on a common cause for corona protection measures at a meeting. Bavaria's health minister Klaus Holacek said that the coronavirus is no longer made up the majority of viral diseases. Or no longer makes up, I suppose. Influenza and RS virus had a much higher proportion of the sick in the hospitals. In this respect, a mask requirement for COVID protection is no longer pro proportionate. The state government continues to make a recommendation to wear masks. Regarding the corona situation, Prime Minister Markus Söder wrote on Twitter, the infection st situation has been stable for a long time. So as you can see, um, Google Translate is not perfect, obviously, but it gets the meaning across very well with a minimum of mistakes. Um, and it goes on to say, Auch Sachsen-Anhalt setzt künftig auf Freiwilligkeit beim Tragen von Masken im Personennahverkehr. Die Pflicht soll hier schon zum 8. Dezember fallen, wie aus Regierungskreisen bekannt wurde. Das Land setze damit auf mehr Eigenverantwortung. Schleswig-Holstein will in der nächsten Woche über ein Ende der Maskenpflicht in Bus und Bahn entscheiden. Ministerpräsident Daniel Günther hatte vor drei Wochen bereits als Ziel verkündet, die bis Jahresende befristete Maskenpflicht nicht zu verlängern. Nordrhein-Westfalen, Hessen, Baden-Württemberg, das Saarland und Mecklenburg-Vorpommern halten zunächst weiter an der Maskenpflicht fest wie die Landesregierung heute deutlich machten. Saxony Anhalt will also be making the wearing of masks in local public transport voluntary in the future. The obligation should fall here on December 8th, as has become known from government circles. The country is thus relying on more personal responsibility. Schleswig-Holstein wants to decide next week on ending the mask requirement on buses and trains. Prime Minister Daniel Günther had already announced three weeks ago that the mask requirement, which was limited until the end of the year, would not be extended. North Rhine, Westphalia, Hessen, Baden-Württemberg, Saarland and Mecklenburg, Western Pomerania will initially continue to adhere to the mask requirement, as the state government made clear today. So, as you can see, a lot of... Corona news still, this is predominantly in the news, um, along, of course, with the Ukraine conflict. Um, so let's see if there's anything about that. Corona and war is predominantly in the news here in Germany. So let's switch, I suppose, to this subject. Krieg gegen die Ukraine, exklusiv nach russischer Besatzung. Wo sind die Häftlinge von Cherson? Nach der Befreiung von Cherson, not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, by the way, I'm, I apologize. Uh, I apologize. I apology. Uh, nach der Befreiung von Cherson mehren sich die Anzeichen dafür, dass die russischen Truppen bei ihrem Abzug mehr als 2000 Häftlinge nach Russland verschleppt haben könnten. Von David Hoffmann. Where are the prisoners of Kursen? After the liberation of Kursen, there were increasing indications that Russian troops could have kidnapped more than 2000 prisoners when they left. By David Hoffmann. Let's have a look at that. Die Ukrainerin Tatjana L. ist verzweifelt. Seit fast einem Monat hat sie nichts mehr von ihrem Sohn gehört. Dimitri wurde Ende 2020 wegen eines Raubüberfalls zu fünf Jahren Haft verurteilt. Seine Haftstrafe saß er in einer Strafkolonie in der Region Cherson ab, der Provinz im Süden der Ukraine, die bis Anfang November mehr als acht Monate unter russischer Besatzung stand. Am 7. November meldete sich Dimitri das letzte Mal per Textnachricht bei seiner Mutter. Er hat gesagt, dass er mit anderen Häftlingen auf die Krim überführt wird, sagt Tatjana im Interview mit dem ARD-Politikmagazin Kontraste. Seitdem sei der Kontakt zu ihm abgebrochen. Dimitri hat früher immer einen Weg gefunden, in Kontakt zu bleiben, egal wie schwierig die Situation war, sagte sie. Ihr einziger Sohn Dimitri könnte einer von bis zu 2500 ukrainischen Gefängniseinsassen sein, die im November über die von Russland annektierte Krim in Gefängnisse auf russischem Staatsgebiet verschleppt worden sein sollen.
Die russische Menschenrechtsorganisation Rus Sidiatschaya, Russland hinter Gittern, kümmert sich um die Rechte von Inhaftierten und steht im Kontakt zu mehreren Ukrainern, die derzeit nach ihren Angehörigen suchen. Laut der Organisation haben bislang zehn ukrainische Familien Nachrichten von ihren Angehörigen bekommen, dass sie sich in Strafkolonien in Russland befinden. Ukrainian Tatjana L. is desperate. She hasn't heard from her son for almost a month. At the end of 2020, Dimitri was sentenced to five years in prison for a robbery. He was serving his sentence in a penal colony in the Kherson region, the province in southern Ukraine that was under Russian occupation for more than eight months until early November. On November 7th, Dimitri texted his mother for the last time. He said that he would be transferred to the Crimea with other prisoners, says Tatiana in an interview with the RID political magazine Contraste. Since then I have lost contact with him. Dimitri used to always find a way to keep in touch, no matter how difficult the situation was, she says. Her only son, Dimitri, may be one of up to 2,500 Ukrainian prison inmates who are said to have been trafficked to prisons on Russian soil via Russia and next Crimea in November. The Russian human rights organization Rus Zijajaja, I'm so sorry, <laughs> this is not meant to be funny, Zijajaja, I can't pronounce this, I'm sorry, Russia behind bars, looks after the rights of detainees and in, is in contact with several Ukrainians who are currently looking for their relatives. According to the organization so far, 10 Ukrainian families have received messages from their relatives that they are in penal colonies in Russia. It's obviously terrible news, since I imagine that conditions for uh, transferred prisoners in Russia aren't that great at all. Uh, terrible, in fact, most likely. But uh, yeah, this is what German news is predominantly reporting on at the moment. This year says talks about uh, inmates being abused and isolated uh, in, in Russia and Russian colonies and all that. Um, or that Ukrainian uh, inmates being recruited as uh, mercenaries and all of that. So let's see if there's anything else. Uh, Russian trade with China and Turkey is growing. Constitutional complaints fail in Karlsruhe. Okay, Lauterbach promises revolution. Confederation saves on preventing of burglaries. Lindner for significantly higher allowances. So let me know if this is a series that would be interesting to you. I'm just trying this out to see, well, your reaction to it, obviously. Uh, it's interesting for me because usually I don't read like a big variety of news out outlets. Uh, I usually, to be honest, keep uh, my news source to Google, Google News, the start page here. It's probably not the best way to do it, but I'm interested in, in, you know, broadening my horizon with different news outlets. And also, obviously, to have this discussion with you in the comments, uh, if you think this is one-sided, obviously, maybe a little bit, uh, what they should be talking about instead, because I know there's many, many other uh, hotspots in the world that often... Um, will be ignored by Western news. So let me know your thoughts. Um, I'm interested. I will have a conversation with you. Uh, I'm more than happy to in the comments and leave a like if you enjoyed this kind of series. If you want more of this, let me also know in the comments if you want more of this kind of video. And I would say um, apart from that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to get Germanized. Goodbye and auf Wiedersehen.